What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here, as always, on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams. And today we are also being featured on the Jeff Meacham Network, as we are every other Friday in place of the dads not always on wrestling. So thank you to all my fans over there that are tuning in. And today I'm going to discuss from 1984, the second film in the three film arc within the greater Star Trek saga that began yesterday with the Wrath of Khan seeing the death of Spock, Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock, starring William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, James Doohan, George Takai, Walter Cohen, Nichelle Nichols, Robin Curtis, and Christopher Lloyd. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And today we continue this arc within the greater saga of the Star Trek films. The arc that began yesterday in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, which ultimately resulted in the death of Spock. And we continue that here today as we search for Spock. We will conclude it tomorrow as we talk about Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. But let's get into this one here, shall we? Captain's Log, star date. 202121.5. The Starship Enterprise returns to planet Earth following a battle with the genetically engineered Khan Nunyan Singh, who had tried to destroy the Enterprise by detonating the Genesis device. The casualties include Spock, whose casket was launched into space and eventually landed on the planet created by the Genesis device, as well as Dr. McCoy, who has begun to kind of act strangely, and arriving at the space dock is detained. Starfleet Commander Admiral Morrow visits the Enterprise and informs the crew that the ship is about to be decommissioned. The crew is also advised by Admiral Morrow to not speak about the Genesis device due to the potential political fallout over the device. Meanwhile, Genesis scientist and Kirk's son, David Marcus, and Lieutenant Savick are investigating the Genesis planet aboard the science vessel Grissom. Now, really quickly here, they did bring back Lieutenant Savick for this film. They just recast her, and Kirstie Alley did not return. Instead, it's Robin Curtis portraying the character. She does an all right job, and I'll get into that more at the end, but she's no Kirstie Alley. Now, on the Genesis planet, they discover an unexpected life form, and they teleport to the planet's surface in order to investigate. Because keep in mind, they're, they're studying the planet from the space shuttle, Grissom. When they get to the planet, they discover that the Genesis device has resurrected the deceased Spock in the form of a child, although his mind is not present. So he almost was reborn once he touched down on the planet. Since Genesis was creating this new world, Spock was basically reborn as a child. Marcus admits to Savick that protomatter, which is highly unstable, was used in the development of the Genesis device, which is causing Spock to age rapidly and will destroy the planet within hours. Meanwhile, a Klingon bird of prey under the command of Krug intercepts information about the Genesis. Krug recognizes the device's potential 
as a weapon. So he cloaks his ship and heads to the Genesis planet. Upon arrival, he destroys the Grissom and searches the planet for any survivors. Back aboard the Enterprise, Sarek, Spock's father, confronts Kirk in regards to his son's death. The pair learn that before he died, Spock transferred his Katra, his living spirit, to McCoy. So both Spock's Katra and his body are needed to officially lay him to rest on his home world of Vulcan. And without help, McCoy will die from carrying it. Kirk and his officers disobey direct orders and spring McCoy from his detention facility. Scotty disables the Excelsior and the crew steal the Enterprise from space dock in order to return to the Genesis planet to retrieve Spock's body. Back on Genesis, the Klingons capture Marcus, Savick, and Spock. But before Krug can interrogate them, the ship signals that the Enterprise has arrived, causing Krug to beam back to the Bird of Prey. In orbit, the undermanned Enterprise gains the upper hand in battle, but the Klingons return fire and disable the ship. A standoff follows, and Krug orders that one of his hostages on Genesis be executed. And Marcus is killed while defending Spock and Savick, while Kirk and crew fake surrender and activate the Enterprise's self-destruct sequence, which kills the Klingon boarding party while the Enterprise crew beams down to the planet's surface. Under the promise of the secret of Genesis, Kirk lures Krug to the planet's surface and has Krug beam the Enterprise crew to the Klingon vessel. As the Genesis planet disintegrates, Kirk and Krug engage in a fistfight, with Kirk emerging victorious after kicking Krug off of a cliff and into a lava flow. Kirk and his officers take control of the Klingon bird of prey and head to the planet Vulcan. Once the Enterprise crew arrives to the planet Vulcan, Spock's Katra is reunited with his body in a very dangerous procedure known as Fautor Pan. The ceremony is successful and Spock is resurrected, alive and well, although his memories are fragmented. During a conversation with Kirk, Spock remembers that he would refer to Kirk as Jim, and then he begins to recognize the rest of the crew as well. And our film ends with all of Spock's friends joyfully gathering around him and celebrating the fact that Spock is back to normal. Again, you know, I've always heard about the curse of the odds with these films and that the odd movies are weaker than the evens. I really liked the story here. Like, I I don't, aside from the recasting of Savick and Kirstie Alley not coming back and Robin Curtis taking over, I have nothing against Robin Curtis. I don't really know too much of her work, to be honest. Kirstie Alley, bigger name, bigger draw. And I feel that because she has said that because she didn't want to get typecast, but I also feel that she was starting to pick up steam with cheers and everything. And that's part of why she didn't want to come back. But I, that notwithstanding, I really enjoyed the story of trying to resurrect Spock and bring him back. 
you know, obviously the fact that Spock was dead and then through a good chunk of it was a boy, an adolescent, a young man, and we didn't really get Leonard Nimoy as Spock till the end. You know, obviously Spock had a smaller role in all this. Part of that was because Leonard Nimoy directed this. But I like the fact that there was a little bit more focus on Bones in this one. As I said when I discussed the first one, Star Trek The Motion Picture, I always liked Bones. He was my favorite character out of the original crew. So for this one to focus a little bit more on him, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And I think also the fact that, you know, he was carrying the Katra of Spock. It really went to show what Spock thinks of Bones in the fact that he melded his mind with him in the last film. Because we always kind of see Spock and Bones go back and forth. Like I said yesterday, they're almost always fighting in a sense of who is Kirk's true best friend. The logical Spock or the snarky and sarcastic Bones. And both of them have claims to being Kirk's best friend. But the two of them are always going back and forth with each other in a battle of wits. And I think it was a true testament to what Spock truly feels about Bones, the fact that he melded his mind with him in the last film, and then they had to extract that from him in this film in order to make Spock complete again. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me. I also like the fact that Christopher Lloyd was in this one. You know, I've made no secret in the past how much I like Christopher Lloyd. You guys have heard me talk about him, you know, whether it's Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Back to the Future, you know. Christopher Lloyd is an actor that I admire a great deal. And seeing him play a villain in this is something different for me because aside from Judge Doom, and I guess you can kind of count Uncle Fester in the beginning of the Adams Family film. But by the end of it, he's full on, you know, Fester Adams. This is, this is one of the few times I've seen him as a bad guy. And I really enjoyed that twist to his character. When it comes to my rating of The Search for Spock, I can say I don't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the original motion picture, but I enjoyed it more than I did The Wrath of Khan yesterday. So with that being said, I'm going to put it right in the middle of what I gave those. The Search for Spock for me gets three and a half out of five stars. We'll see what happens tomorrow when we discuss the next even number film and we round out this arc when I review Star Trek The Voyage Home. But for right now, the motion picture is my favorite of the ones that we've seen. Make sure you guys get out there on social media. Get those hashtags trending. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. Hashtag Jeff Meacham Network. And of course, the ever popular hashtag shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. 
Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you get out there. Do what that commercial just told you. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all your official merchandise of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood. Get you your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt. Dad's not always on wrestling. Stat Boy Sports Bar. Hashtag Stat Boy Approved. Hashtag shenanigans. Get you your official merchandise for the Jeff Meacham Network. Three different designs of the Jeff Meacham Network logo for you to choose from. Meacham Mania, Talk Wrestling, and so much more. Tomorrow, right back here, exclusively on the Casa D18 Studios channel, I will be bringing you yet another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, and I will be rounding out this arc, as I mentioned, with Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. You're not going to want to miss out on that tomorrow, right back here, exclusively on the Casa D18 Studios channel and Renegades Reviews. To all my loyal fans out there that have been watching the premiere, leaving your comments over here, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. To all my fans watching later on on demand, leaving your comments down here, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you once again to the man, the myth, the legend, the West Coast professor, Jeff Meacham, for allowing me to come on to his channel, as I do every other week when there isn't a dad's, not always, on wrestling. I greatly appreciate you allowing me to crash the channel. To all my loyal fans that tune in for me each and every day, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you guys tomorrow. Live long and prosper.